Okay, so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, final session for today. Now, this argument is my favorite argument. Okay? One of the reasons why it's my favorite argument is because it has been appreciated by all of the schools of creed from my limited knowledge and understanding, okay? And the other reason why I really like this argument is because you don't need to know anything about science, you don't have to have too many premises like a beginning to the universe. It's a metaphysical argument, meaning it's an argument based on first principles. And this argument is motivated by the following idea. Listen to this very carefully. It is the mark of a rational mind. It is the mark of a rational mind to question that which didn't have to be. To question that which did not have to be. So if something didn't have to be the way that it is, then it requires some form of explanation. Take for example, your very beard you are touching, my beloved brother. That beard could have been shorter, it could have not existed at all, it could have been longer, it could have been straighter, it could have been curlier, it could have been a different color, right? So you question that which didn't have to be, it is the mark of an intellect. It is the mark of a piercing intellect of someone with a profound cognitive abilities that they question that which didn't have to be. Sah or la? Exactly. Agreed. So, does everyone understand this point? It is the mark of a rational mind. It is the mark of a rational mind to question that which doesn't have to be. Look at this chair. Look at it. This chair didn't have to be there. So the existence of this chair doesn't explain itself. The explanation for this chair, Ya Ukhti, you must be texting about, you know, my bio, okay, it's totally irrelevant, irrelevant, so don't worry. So, the thing is, the existence of this chair doesn't explain itself. The explanation is not within the chair. The explanation of this chair is external to the chair. In this case, you saw me place it here. In this case, someone made the chair, right? So, this is the foundation this is the intellectual driving force for this argument it is the mark of a rational mind to question that which didn't have to be so here here's the basic argument number one the universe and all that we perceive is either independent in this case also referred to as necessary or is dependent on something else dependent or dependent on something independent and eternal the universe and all that we perceive cannot be independent or dependent on something else dependent therefore the universe and all that we perceive depend on something independent and eternal which is something that is necessary this sounds like a lot of jargon i agree that's why we're going to walk through this argument so in order to understand this argument, what we have to do is actually define what we mean by dependent. What do we mean by dependent in this context? The first thing we mean is that when something is dependent, it is not necessary. Now, what do we mean by necessary? Necessary doesn't have a linguistic context here, it has a philosophical context. Necessary means it was impossible for it to have not existed. I repeat, 
When you say something is necessary, it means it was impossible for it to have not existed. So when we're saying something is dependent, it means it is not necessary. It means it was possible for it to have not existed. So the universe, right, it was possible that it didn't exist. This therefore means there is an explanation for its existence. An external set of factors or external explanation that explains the universe because it was possible for the universe to have not existed. Let me give you an example. Imagine you walk downstairs, you walk into your kitchen. As you walk into the kitchen, you open the fridge. When you open the fridge, you see an egg box and there is a pen on the egg box. You don't close the fridge by saying the pen necessarily exists. No, because the mark of a rational mind questions that which didn't have to be. There is nothing necessary about the pen. There is nothing necessary about the egg box being in the fridge. It could have not existed. Correct? Good. So that's what we mean by dependent. And therefore, there must have been an external set of factors or circumstances or an explanation that explains the presence of the pen on the egg box. Just like, for example, it could be my son did something silly. <laughs> so, so, there you go. By the way, the reason I'm this theatrical, number one, the environment suggests that one should be theatrical. <laughs> and number two, I'm usually like this anyway when I talk about these topics. I think I just got used to it. I don't really care what people think, which is a good state to be in, to be honest. But also, there's a deliberate neuro-linguistic programming going on. I am manipulating your hearts and minds as I'm doing this. Because I'm actually a bit eccentric, you're never going to forget this. <laughs> okay? You're never going to forget this. You may forget the content, but you won't forget the experience. And if the feeling is, oh, this is convincing, ah, this is good, therefore, it would affect you in a very powerful way so you can continue your intellectual and your spiritual journey. All right? So there's always a deliberate ploy going on for me to manipulate your minds in one motion, just like what they do in Star Wars. You know the Jedi's? Yeah. Anyway, so another definition of dependent. Another way of looking at something being dependent in a philosophical sense is that the fundamental building blocks of something could have been arranged in a different way. The fundamental building blocks of something could have been arranged in a different way. For example, look at this picture. It says, I love you. It's an arrangement of flowers. It is an arrangement of flowers that says, I love you. Imagine we were driving and we approached a roundabout. Or as you guys say in Canada, a roundabout, yeah? Say we went to a roundabout, yeah? And we saw an arrangement of flowers that says, I love you. Now that, the fundamental building blocks of those flowers are the flowers themselves. Those flowers could have been arranged in a different way. They could have been arranged and it could have said, I adore you. It could have said it in French. J'adore or je t'aime. It could have said it in Turkish. Seni seviyorum. It could have said it in Greek. Sarabo. It could have said it in any other language and with any other letters. And therefore it suggests there must have been something that is external to the fundamental building blocks and that arrangement that determined that specific arrangement. Because why is it this arrangement and not another arrangement? Correct? Good. Another definition of dependent, which is the more common sense notion of dependent, is something is not self-subsisting. It requires something external to itself in order to survive. Just like this cat, this cat requires something external to it, such as food and tender loving care in order for it to survive. Significantly, another defining feature of something being dependent is that it has limited physical qualities. 
Limited physical qualities. Why? Well, take this cup, this coffee holder as an example, this coffee thingy. This coffee thingy has limited physical qualities, correct? It has a limited shape, size, color, volume, charge, temperature, texture, right? And it didn't give rise to its own limitations. So there must be a, an external set of factors or external features that explains the limited physical qualities of this coffee thingy. So, defining features of something being dependent is that it has limited physical qualities and those limited physical qualities didn't give rise to themselves. So there must be an external set of factors and explanation external to it that gave rise to the limited physical qualities. Any questions so far? So we define what we mean by dependent. So what we do now, we apply this to the universe. The philosophical definition we've just gone through, we apply it to the universe. So, there are three explanations really. Either the universe is necessary, or it's dependent, or it's dependent on something else dependent, or it's dependent on something necessary. So let's go and discuss these arguments. Well, one possibility is Hamza, the universe and everything that we perceive is necessary. It is independent. Why is this wrong? Who could answer this question? Yes, sir. The universe could be in any number of other states. Like the atmosphere doesn't have to be away from this planet. We don't have to exist. Right? Absolutely. There is nothing necessary about the universe. This universe could have not existed. This universe could have existed in another way. Correct? So therefore, there is nothing necessary about this universe. Let's apply all the definitions that we spoke about concerning dependent. So, the universe is not necessary from the point of view that it could have existed in a different way. The universe could have not existed at all, right? Even scientists say this, there could have been another universe or no universe, right? The other definition, the fundamental building blocks of the universe could have been arranged in a different way. Whether you consider those fundamental, fundamental building blocks to be quarks or whatever the case may be, the point is, they could have been arranged in a different way. Therefore, it requires an explanation external to it. And if the universe is not necessary from the point of view that it could have been not existing, then it requires some kind of an explanation of why does it exist in the first place. Also, we need to understand that the universe is, has limited physical qualities. What, the universe didn't give rise to its own limited physical qualities. Therefore, there needs to be an external set of factors or an explanation that explains the limited physical qualities of the universe. So we can't say that the universe is independent or necessary. Second point, well maybe the universe is dependent, okay we agree, but it's dependent on something else that's also dependent. Is this an adequate explanation? Yes. Why? MashaAllah. The uncle was saying, the brother was saying, well, the universe is dependent, okay. But it can't be dependent on something else dependent. Because that dependent thing would also require an explanation. And if you say it's another dependent thing, if that goes on forever, you'll never have an explanation in the first place. Brilliant. And what's interesting is, this doesn't just have to rely on the notion that the universe had a beginning. Obviously, in our Aqidah, we believe the universe had a beginning. To suggest otherwise would be kufr. It would be kufr. However, we can entertain, just for argument's sake, if someone says, hey, the universe is eternal, so it doesn't require any explanation. False. Conceptually, you can have an eternal thing that is still dependent. For example, imagine there was an infinite number of human beings. 
and each human being was produced by the biological activity of their parents. But you have an infinite number of human beings. We don't, we, we're not going to claim now that the chain of human beings, the infinite chain of human beings, somehow exists necessarily. No! There's nothing necessary about the existence of the in, in, infinite number of human beings. Because we can still ask the question, why are there any human beings at all? We could still ask the question for each human being in the chain, what explains each individual human being? So the beautiful thing about this argument is that it doesn't require the universe to be finite. You, someone could assume it's eternal and the argument still follows. That just because it's eternal, it doesn't automatically mean it is necessary. And the full experiment here is, we imagine we had an infinite number of human beings, each of the human beings were as a result of the biological activity of their parents, but yet it's an infinite number of human beings, you can't now just say, oh, therefore, the universe, uh, therefore, the infinite number of human beings necessarily exist, they don't require an explanation. Of course they require an explanation. Because why are there any human beings in the first place? We could ask the same question for each of the individual human beings. What gave rise to them? Right? There's nothing necessary about them because they didn't have to exist. Because when you say something is necessary, it means it was impossible for it to not have existed. It means that it doesn't require an explanation external to itself. Its very existence explains itself. So the final rational position is that the universe and all that we perceive depends on something necessary. And that necessary thing is independent and eternal. The reason is independent, because if it were dependent, it would require another explanation, and therefore we have the same problem. The reason it is eternal, because if it wasn't eternal, meaning finite, it would, de it would be dependent, because all finite things are dependent, and therefore it would require an explanation. Therefore we can conclude that the universe and everything we perceive depends on its existence, on something that is independent, eternal, and therefore necessary. And that makes sense of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-ghani, the free, the independent. Now there are a few objections to this argument. The first objection is, well the universe exists independently. Well this is not true, because we have seen the universe, when we observe the universe, when we interact with the universe, we see that the, there's nothing necessary about its existence. It could have not existed, right? It could have not existed. So therefore it requires an explanation for its existence, so it shows that the universe can't be necessary. It's not independent and eternal. What about the second contention? Some argue, well, the universe is just a brute fact. But you can't just ignore the dependent features of the universe. You can't just get away with that. That's a cop-out. That's not right. Just because you don't like the explanation that the universe is as a result of something necessary. No. Think about it from this point of view. Imagine you had, you're walking down the street and you went to the park and you saw a hovering green ball. Are you going to just look at the green ball saying, hey, that's just a brute fact. It necessarily exists hovering in the park. Well, of course you're not going to say such a thing. Its very existence requires an explanation because of it has a dependent nature. It could have not existed. It has limited physical qualities. So take this ball and increase it to the size of a bus. The same question applies. Take that board now, increase it to the size of the universe. Same question applies. So the point is, you can't just say it's a brute fact. Because the features of the universe are crying out for an explanation. And, if, and the universe is, te is telling us by our interaction and observation of it, that the universe is not independent. It is not necessary. It could have not been there, and therefore it requires an explanation external to itself. The other contention is, well, science will eventually find an answer. 
Science will find an answer, Hamza. Yeah? This is God of the gaps. You don't know what's going on, so you're squeezing God in there as an explanation. This is false. This is not science, God of the gaps. Okay? This is not God of the gaps. Because this is not a scientific argument. This transcends science. Because the beautiful thing is, this argument accepts any science because it's a metaphysical argument. You could bring any scientific explanation, any scientific explanation, brothers and sisters, and it would, the argument still works. Why? Because science can only refer to things that are dependent. Science cannot refer to things that are necessary. Because the minute science gives you something, it would have to be observed directly or indirectly. If it could be observed directly or indirectly, it automatically means it's dependent. Because things that could be observed directly or indirectly have limited physical qualities. So any theory, theory X, theory Y, theory Z, theory 1, theory 2, theory 3, scientific conclusion A, B or C, they still will be limited and dependent. Therefore, they require an explanation. So this, this absorbs any science. And it says that everything that's observable, everything that is perceived, whether directly or indirectly, is going to have the features of a dependent thing, which therefore means there must be an external set of factors or circumstances or an explanation outside of that thing to explain it. Therefore, it's dependent. And the best explanation for that is not another dependent thing because of an infinite regress of dependencies. And it doesn't explain anything ultimately. And therefore, the explanation is for things that are dependent that there is a necessary being that is independent and eternal. It has to be independent because if it's not independent, it will be dependent and therefore require an explanation. And it has to be eternal because if it's finite, in other words, not eternal, it will be dependent because finite things require an explanation for their existence. So the, the, the argument that science is going to explain this simply doesn't work. It doesn't work from this point of view. Now some people would also argue, Hamza, you've made the concept of necessary up. <laughs> no, I haven't. The concept of things being necessary is a well, well, well understood, well discussed concept in philosophy. I haven't made this up just to try and prove God's existence, yeah? So, any questions? Any questions? Yes? But about um, the scientific uh, claim for Quran and stuff. I 100% agree with you. We're going to go through this. Look, look, what does that say? Allah. You will only understand this when we go through this tomorrow. Okay? Any questions on the dependency issue? Yes, sir. In the book, it says, in English, it says, you're saying God is independent. Why can't they say the same for the universe? What would you reply? Well, we, we, we just went through that when we said, well, one contention is, well, maybe the universe is independent. Well, if someone's saying the universe is independent, they're basically saying the universe necessarily exists. If the universe necessarily exists, well, we, there's a big problem because the features of the universe are saying that the universe could have not existed. The universe could have not existed. We could have had a universe that was fundamentally different, or we could have a, we could have had a universe that didn't exist at all. Right? So therefore, it requires an explanation outside of itself to explain the very fact that it came into existence or that it exists. Also, the fundamental building blocks of the universe could have been arranged in a different way. Since they could have been arranged in a different way, then they require an external set of circumstances or a determiner to determine that fundamental arrangement. Also, 
The universe has limited physical qualities, and it's made up of things with limited physical qualities. Limited physical qualities don't give rise to themselves. There must have been an external set of circumstances or an explanation that gave rise to those limited physical qualities. So it follows the universe cannot be independent and necessary. Next question. By the way, in, in our tradition, there's many conceptions of this argument. You read in the Akeda books that they refer to this argument as wajib al wujud, right? And then you have concept, concepts such as, you know, they refer to words like it's mumkin, it's possibly existent, it's wajib, it's necessary existent. You have this in some of the creedal books. And this is a conception of the argument applied in a contemporary way. But there are other ways of arguing this too. 